Hi, I was gonna design a better solid state Tesla coil driver, but then I realized that there are commercial ones out there that I can just buy and put together. So I bought this one, which is called a One Tesla TS, made by a company called One Tesla. I saw Smarter Every Day put it together the other day. Whoa! So it should be a breeze to assemble. No offense, Mr. Smarter, it's just that I'm. I'm thinking if I can put a reliable device together, I can later modify it to play my kind of smooth music. See, the sound is made by the arcs. Like some kind of loud arc speaker. I shall call it the Zeus speaker. According to stories, Zeus used lightning bolts to play death metal music in his fancy parties. And that's all you need to know about mythology. Sh the Zeus speaker name is already taken, so maybe the Thunder speaker. Sh if I survive this kit, I'll give away four of these. Okay, let's see. Decent packaging. <laughs> Look at this, the coil and the top load. Where's the user manual? Welcome to the world of high voltage. <laughs> Mate, I've been there for a while. This is not a user manual. Stop! Download the PDF user manual. I can appreciate that. With something potentially dangerous like this, they want to make sure you always have the latest manual. What is it? Wire? I should say this is pretty good quality. Now that's what I call a top load. Heat sink and uh, secondary winding. Very nicely wound. I'm pretty happy that I don't have to go through winding this again. Just remember that these wires are quite fragile, so if you scratch the surface, you might break the wire. Quite fine too, I wonder how many turns. Let's see if I can count the number of turns in one centimeter. These wires are so fine, I can hardly see them. I see nothing, I have to take a close-up picture and count it there. I count around 92 turns per centimeter, and the whole thing is around 16.7 centimeters, so roughly around 1,500 turns. So many components. Let's try to learn as much electronic as possible from this. This is what's called the printed circuit board or PCB that contains all the copper wirings required to connect the components together. The white stuff printed in white ink is called silk screen and shows the location of the components on the board. As you see the silk screen shows an outline of the components as well as something called the reference designator which shows which component goes where like IC1, IC2, C8. You will also find the same reference designators in the manual so that you can match Match your components to the silk screen and know where it goes. Now the kits typically come with through hole components which means that the pins of the components have to go through the holes in the PCB like this and be soldered on the opposite side. The reason is that it's easier to solder the through hole components. The other type of components are surface mount components which are a little bit harder to solder at home. Uh, not a big deal for me because I'm I, I have experience in the field. I've soldered them before so I can do it again. But for the non-experience, it's easier to have through hole components. Just remember, you should always follow the manual step by step and accurately. But if you want my suggestion, I say you have to solder the smaller components first and then go to the chubby large ones. Because if you solder these long ones first, then you won't be able to get to the board with your chubby fingers. Well, the manual says I should start assembling the interrupter first. Let me explain how it works. This device is made of two pieces. One is the Tesla coil and its driver and the other one is called an interrupter. What the interrupter does is that it interrupts the power output to the Tesla coil with a certain frequency. So depending on that frequency driving the Tesla coil, you hear that sound coming from the Tesla coil. Now you load the music into your interrupter and it plays those frequencies to the Tesla coil and you can hear music. If you run a Tesla coil freely with no power interruptions, it's typically very low noise like you have seen in my previous videos. The resonance frequency of a Tesla coil is way beyond human hearing. It's in the order of hundreds of kilohertz to megahertz. You only hear a sound when you change the output power or interrupt it at a certain frequency. And that's what the interrupter does in this circuit. Okay, let's assemble the interrupter first. See, this is one of those tough surface mount components and they knew you wouldn't be able to put it on on your own and did it for you. 
Thanks one Tesla. Let's put on the resistors first. See, the value of the resistors is shown on them by color coding. And the good thing about their manual is that they are showing you what colors you have to expect for a certain value. In case of capacitors and resistors, I don't solder them one by one, but I insert as many as I can and then solder them all in one shot. See like this, I insert it from one side and bend the legs on the opposite side so it doesn't fall off. I solder and then cut the legs off. Make sure you assemble everything as shown on the silk screen. What's this? They sent me an extra one kilo. Ohm. It should be a hundred ohm. I'll tell them. Fortunately, I have extras in my arsenal. Of course, it's no problem for me reading the color codes on the resistors because I'm... I mean, I'm educated in the field. I should be able to read these. For every other component other than resistors, the value is typically written on them, like these capacitors or ICs or diodes. Just to let you know, boy, some capacitors don't have polarity, but for the ones that have, make sure you put the polarity right. One more important thing, when you are putting these things together, make sure the legs of the components are as short as possible. Extra long legs means extra impedance and antennas that can cause all sorts of problems. Okay, I put on everything that doesn't immediately fall off and now I can solder their legs and cut them. Now to start soldering your board, you need a solder guy. <laughs> it's on. You usually need to heat your soldering iron to over 300 degrees Celsius. I usually put it at 480 because I'm tough like that. Now for a good soldering job, you should know that all the surfaces that the solder is supposed to adhere to must be heated to the melting point of the solder. So it's beneficial to leave your solder on those surfaces to heat them up first before you apply the solder. Now small surfaces like these heat up very quickly. But for thicker copper, you have to be patient and let it heat up well. And don't put too much solder, just enough. Now you just take a side cutter and cut the extra pins short. Maybe I should hold those pins so they don't jump around too much. There, one set of components soldered. We can clean the flux later with some acetone. For other components that fall off, like the IC sockets, put some solder on your iron and then solder the opposing legs so that it won't fall off anymore and then you can solder the rest of the pins easily just make sure the direction of the IC sockets as well as everything else matches the silk screen There, I'm done. And here is the display. Unfortunately, it doesn't come with batteries, but I have my power supply and I can power it up. There are three volt batteries each, so six volt. Okay, here we are. Yeah. Now to clean it, you can put a little bit of acetone on the board and using a toothbrush, clean up the flux. And then dry it up. Blow dry is probably better. All is left is some mechanical assembly. I mean, anyone can do mechanical engineering if you have done puzzles as a kid at least once. I don't know why they even teach it in schools. Yeah! Hmm, very nice. Haha, <laughs> the interrupter is done and you all doubted me. I'm a professional kidsmith. Well, the most important part of the kit remains. But this video has already been long enough just to promote a shirt. Get yours and other designs from the link below. But if you're a Middle Eastern, I suggest you don't wear it in an airport. I already get enough strange looks in the streets. I'll continue the kit with more circuit analysis in the next video. Give away time! Still have to put it together. But after I finish it successfully, I'm planning on four giveaways. Two to my patrons at patreon.com and two to you, the viewers. So everyone has the opportunity to zap the sh out of themselves.
So wish me luck. And if you want to get one Tesla or tiny Tesla kit, go to onetesla.com and use the promotion code electroboom10 for 10% off. And then you'll have your own awesome musical Tesla coil.